to come to order, uh, and can I welcome everybody to this um, cabinet meeting to discuss the budget. Thank you for your uh, attendance. Um, just go through the preliminary items. Uh, first of all, item one is members' code of conduct. Now, we have a number of members, not everybody, who, who are school governors. Um, so, can those people who are school governors just put their hands up? So I need to declare, Patrick, um, an interest on behalf of all of those cabinet members who are schools governments in particular relation to the schools budget, which is on our agenda today. You've got everybody yet, okay? Right, so I'll declare that. Now, are there any other um, cabinet members who have any other interests they wish to declare? Can they please say now? No? Okay. Um, minutes? Do we have any minutes that I can sign? Okay, so uh, that takes us on, on then to item uh, three. So we have our, our standard monitoring reports. We're starting with the revenue monitoring. <coughs> 17 million euro spend, which incorporates a number of adverse variances to be noted. So the officers continue to identify actions and take measures to effectively manage the overall budgets and reduce the impact of any adverse projected pressures that may result in those spends. Okay, thanks, Jeanette. Uh, can we agree those recommendations, Cameras? Very good. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to item four, which is the capital monitoring uh, report for quarter three. Jeanette? Again, Thank you. This report provides an update on the progress in delivering the capital programme in 2018 19 at the end of December 18, and there's a 33.3 million pounds spent to date. What we've been doing currently in this year includes uh, we have made significant investments in the latest to latest operate latest window, uh, system at Windows 10. <coughs> Delegated approval currently being sought to pay out for living 0.44 million pounds from the Council Extra Care Capital Programme in order for 78 units of extra care to be developed at all kinds close. This will be a key development that contributes towards the plan additional 300 units required to achieve the rural plan target. But over 4 million pounds spent on highways and improvements. A closely linked to progression the Royal Growth Company is an allocation of 9.8 million for investment in properties, which will in turn provide revenue and stream to the council. <coughs> acquisition of the new cinema has been completed at a cost of 7.1 million. The acquisition of Birkin Marks is expected to be completed by the February. Okay, um, we've got the, um, <coughs> the recommendations there on, on page um, 8 of your agenda. Um, and I think just to echo what you said, it's nice to see some of the uh, schemes around uh, improvements to our schools and our schools, um, as well as the extra care housing you talked about and the highways uh, improvements as well. That's, uh, I think, all very welcome uh, views for the, for the borough. So, um, the, Greek, the recommendation on page 8, can we agree those? Yes. <coughs> okay, so that takes us then to uh, item 5. Um, 
2019-20 budget proposal scrutiny report. Uh, and I'll just say um, a, a few words about this. I'll say more in a minute when we move the budget resolution. But um, obviously, I want to start by paying thanks to all those elected members who um, participated in the scrutiny uh, committee deliberations around the budget. Um, Cabinet has uh, studied the, uh, the proposals, the recommendations from those workshops and those committees in, in, in detail, and we've um, uh, incorporated our, in our budget proposals where we think appropriate the uh, ideas that are coming out of those uh, scrutiny sessions. So, all I want to do at this stage, as I said, say a bit more in a minute when I move the budget resolution, is rather than just um, uh, noting the content, if we could call our appreciation and thanks to members who took part in those scrutiny uh, discussions. Can, can we do that? Uh, okay. 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 okay, so that takes us then to the main business today, which is item six, the council budget um, uh, for next year. And I'm going to just start by, by moving a, a, a motion which we are tabling today's cabinet. And this will incorporate uh, many of the other items in section six. Um, after I've moved this, cabinet comment colleagues will, I'm sure, want to make some uh, contributions to that debate. But I'm then going to ask, after we've done that, Bernie particularly as the Cabinet member for children and families to um, introduce the school's budget. Um, so uh, that, that will happen um, uh, in a minute, but let me just uh, start off by moving our budget motion. And, and, Pat, and Patrick, you've got copies of the budget motion which I think you can give out to um, colleagues who are here today. And um, if you can do that now while I, I start going through it. So, um, can I just start off by by making what I think is it does feel it does feel a bit like Groundhog Day this uh, this budget speech in the sense that you know we're in the ninth year of a conservative government we're in the ninth year of austerity and you know we've continued to deal with a very challenging financial situation um, we we know that we've had some some of the reasons two million pounds from our budget by, by government, which is approaching kind of 40% of our budget. So, you know, that's a huge amount of money to take out of the budget and maintain um, good quality services. Sadly, um, although the Chancellor uh, did put some one off funding in the budget, uh, in the autumn statement for local governments in, in areas like adult and social care, um, I still believe that we have crisis in social care in this country and in rural. Uh, we know demand is, is increasing, we know the budget is, is not keeping pace with that demand. Um, government have promised green papers, white papers uh, on social care, but as yet uh, we haven't seen anything. Um, now I know everybody in Westminster, all the ministers and politicians are distracted with Brexit. Um, but actually, I think this is something that is more, even more important than Brexit, because you know, this, this crisis in our social care uh, system is, is causing major problems, not just in terms of us meeting that demand, but it's squeezing the discretionary budgets around things like highways and leisure and all those other things that our residents tell us is so important. So, you know, I think my message from today is the government really need to get that together and come up with uh, a proposal about how we deal with the, the social care crisis. And ditto on local funding more generally. They, they launched the so-called Fair Funding Review last year. Um, we've um, been told that it's, it may report sometime this year. We know that the system is fundamentally unfair to Northern Council like Wood um, and is, is um, I think beneficial to the more affluent authorities in the south, and that isn't right, and that isn't fair, and, and it does need to be addressed. So, you know, again, this is another uh, example of a, of a policy area that has slipped because I believe it's a 
rates it. And again, for us in local government, this is this is now really really urgent because now as we said many times, after 2021, our our main government grant for revenue support grant disappears entirely. And at the moment, there's no indication about what happens after that. So um, it does feel a bit like Groundhog Day because we have been saying this that these these points for a number of years now when we move our budget. And it makes um, planning for the budget very, very difficult in, in this climate of great uncertainty around the, the future of um, our local government funding generally. So, okay, so it's a great case that kind of national comp backlog that we put our budget together for uh, 1920. And the starting point, as it, as it sort of emphasises in the, in the report in item 6, is to continue to deliver on our three core priorities in the world plan, you know, helping vulnerable people, growing our economy and improving the environment. They, they continue to be our, our focus and the 20 pledges that underpin the world plan. And um, later in the year, uh, we're going to have a more detailed report to council on, on where we're up to with the 20 pledges, but I'm, I'm really pleased to report that I think we're on track to achieve you know, the overwhelming majority of those 20 pledges, if you could be the detailed um, indicators that measure uh, the, the pledges, um, which is a, a real tribute to the, to the work of um, the administration and our officers. I want to thank um, you know, all of those people for the work that they've done. Clearly, we need to start turning our attention, as we will in the next year, to um, what happens post-2020. The world's changed since we agreed the original world plan in 2015, so we need a new, a new plan for world and, and work needs to uh, start on, on what that might look like. But that's for uh, another day. So, turning to the, the budget specifically, so the report on item 6 that we've got in front of us today, uh, in particular the medium term financial strategy set out the key, key ways in which we're addressing the budget challenge and, and just to uh, recap, we had a massive, we had a massive challenge uh, in 1920 of closing a budget gap of some 45 million, That's certainly you know, um, an eye-watering amount of money to, um, to replace. So how have we done that? Uh, three main elements to, to this. One is, and it's absolutely critical, generating new income, additional funding for the council. You know, we can't rely anymore on government help, so we need to generate our own resources. Um, the, the best example, I think, of how we're doing that is the World Growth Company. Um, that will generate income of somewhere in the region of five million next year and 50 plus million over the next decade. You know, that is going to be a major way in which we'll be able to fill that gap that the government have left us uh, to ensure that we can fund public services going forward. And so I'm really pleased the, the progress we've made to getting that growth company up and running. It will be obviously transformational in terms of the regeneration, the jobs, the investment that we to the borough. Uh, and we, we know that we've got social value at its core, so hiring local, buying local is key, but it will also bring vital new funding streams into the council over that 10 year period. And I think linked to that is some really um, innovative work that we've done around community wealth building. I want to pay tribute to Jeanette um, here, who's led the work on community wealth building. Jeanette, we had a a really inspirational conference a couple of weeks ago at Birkenhead Town Hall where we uh, talked about what we're doing but brought other people together from around the country to hear what, um, what was going on in terms of good practice elsewhere. Uh, we had Matthew, Matthew Brown, the leader of the uh, Preston Council, to talk about the, the, the Preston model which is, which is held up as being the example of good practice. I actually think we're doing a lot in, in excess and in advance of what Preston is doing. Um, and we think that the community wealth building strategy will, will add more than about 10, about 10 million pounds to the local economy uh, um, over, the, um, uh, over the next year. And that's around keeping wealth within the borough, not just within the council, but within all our anchor institutions, the health service, the police, etc. <coughs> and the, a lot of other really exciting ideas like developing the community bank, etc., which I know Jeanette 
will uh, will be leading on over the next year. So I think these both the growth company and the community wealth building uh, plan are really good examples of how we're not sitting back and letting um, you know the budget challenge um, sort of wash over us. We're being proactive and, and actually coming up with really uh, substantive income streams that will enable us to uh, keep local authority services funded um, going, going forward. So uh, I think that's those, those two uh, areas are really important. In addition to that, we know we're looking at, um, in terms of bringing an additional income, this key, key theme going through our budget, we know we're looking at new housing, George, uh, as part of the work on the um, uh, planning policy and the plan. Um, we're doing a lot to create the climate to attract new businesses uh, into the borough, new investments, and we're using our, our treasury management expertise to attract new income through the work we're doing um, with um, the, the, the team in treasury management. Um, so I think, you know, all of that says to me that we are um, well placed, I think, to withstand the inevitable um, uh, sort of challenges that removing government grants completely will throw up. Um, as I've said many times, you know, I do not want Wirral to be um, another council like Northamptonshire, Tory control of Northamptonshire, which literally would run out of money. Yeah. Uh, we can't we can't allow ourselves to get into that position. So I, I do think the, the you know the proactive work we've done is going to be vital. Second way in which we're dealing with the budget challenge is by doing things uh, on a more joined up basis. Uh, Wirral really is now regarded as the most joined up council in the country, which I think is a huge accolade um, for us. And I'm proud that, that we have um, some fantastic partnerships with our, um, our public sector partners, but also the voluntary community sector. And there are a number of examples in that in the papers in section six of how those partnerships are bearing fruit. So we talk about the uh, Wirral Youth Hub, um, Paul, Paul Stewart, George Davis, um, particularly you've been concerned, you've been involved with that, but that's um, leading to a cut in youth offending of some 30% by council, uh, police, housing association, all of the key agencies working together in one in one place. And I think that's a again an example that's held up as good practice uh, elsewhere. We, we know that the transfer of our adult social care, social workers, Chris, to the NHS um, has, has been a, a, a great success in the sense that it's, um, you know, residents and patients no longer have to tell their story multiple times to multiple professionals. That integrated team is now delivering a more efficient service and it's better for, for, the, for the public who are, who are on the receiving end of these services. I mentioned the, 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 the work with creating jobs, so the um, uh, partnership with the Chamber of Commerce has created about 3,500 jobs over the last three years, and that needs to continue, and that's been a very productive partnership. And um, uh, also, I've, I've got a reference to the work that we're doing on um, better value for money through our focus on prevention and early health, in, particularly in children's services. <coughs> and the, the work we're doing through the World Together initiative, uh, particularly with our residents about developing more resilient communities to deal with the, you know, the, the, the effects of, um, of austerity. So all of that work around working in partnership, joining things up, I think has been tremendous and I, I want to sort of thank everybody associated with that. And then the third final leg of our budget strategy is, is just to deliver better services and greater efficiencies. Um, we know that that will often require new ways of working, so this is about the transformation agenda and I think it's, um, there's a number of examples of new models that we've been looking at, so particularly in filling your field of leisure services, we're looking at a number of new models which I think are really exciting, which again will bring new income streams into the council and make, and make, and make those services, particularly the pressure that we know on discretionary services more sustainable going forward. Um, I want to also uh, pay tribute to the excellent work that's been done uh, by Paul Boyce and Bernie and the Children's Services for the, the, the fact that we have you know, turned around that service to a position where I am confident that we will come out of the intervention in the next 
um, six or so months is a tribute to the hard work of, um, of both of you, but all of the staff as well in, 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 in children's services. Um, and as well as that, we was reference to the work we're doing around digitalisation, which I think is, uh, is, is really good, and this rolling review of all 200 of our services, which is which has been going on and will continue in the next financial year. And I'm, I'm really pleased that as part of this budget, uh, Stuart, there's a package of improvements to our highways, services totaling some 8 million um, in areas like um, rolling out the uh, new street lighting um, uh, equipment, um, potholes, highways improvements. For me, this is all part of what I call getting the basic right. I think that's again, um, thanks to you, Stuart, and all the team um, that, that have been involved in that program. So, in, in, in summary, um, <coughs> this key theme that I've mentioned about making sure that we put things in place now to fill the gap by lost government plan, I think is, is vital, and I think it is also <coughs> there to improve improvements in the quality of the services that we provide. And clearly, I, you know, I'm, I'm, as a Labour, Led council, I'm you know, hoping that we would, we would have a soon. We have a change in government to have a more enlightened view about uh, local government funding. But as long as we have a Tory government practicing austerity, it seems to me we've got no other choice but to uh, redouble our efforts next year to make sure that we have new funding streams coming into the council, new delivery models that aren't uh, dependent on council funding as much as in the past putting measures in place to make our communities more resilient um, and making sure that we that, that commercial, more commercial approach is, um, is, is at the centre of everything that we do. Um, so that uh, if you know, heaven help us if everything does continue, we can weather that storm until we get a more enlightened national government who really does uh, believe in good quality public services. So, in conclusion, I just want to finish off by saying I'm really pleased that I believe that the budget we're moving today is balanced, sustainable and legal. Uh, it does not require, require any closures of any of our services and that must be, we must be pretty unique in, in that because I talk to my colleagues um, in other local authorities and you know there are dire stories of facilities closing left, right and centre. That is not happening at all, and I'm really pleased by that. We're continuing to fund those key frontline services and uh, make sure they improve. Um, it protects our workforce and doesn't require any compulsory redundancies. And the final thing I want to say is, the other thing that I'm really proud about this budget is it puts a Labour stamp. I've talked yes. many times about putting a Labour stamp on this budget. And I want to, I want to give you four, four sort of elements to why I do think it has a lot of One is the work around the growth company and the community of that I referenced earlier on. Um, I'm really pleased that we've, we've brought in a scheme to help 9,000 low income households through the council tax reduction scheme. You know, I know you've led on that. That is a really welcome, I think, um, addition to the work we're doing on addressing poverty and deprivation in the borough. So um, I'm delighted to see that. Um, third, thirdly, it puts more money in the pockets of our staff. Um, I, we've, as it says in the budget resolution, we've um, listened to the views of our trade union colleagues. Um, we were persuaded that the four days unpaid leave was causing real hardship amongst our staff. And we decided that we think that it's time to improve that situation by moving down from four days unpaid leave to three days unpaid leave. And that is the, uh, the, the commitment we're giving to our staff in this, in this budget. So I'm hoping that will be well received by our trade union colleagues and all of our staff. And I want to thank our trade union colleagues for the, I think, really good relationship that we've developed. Um, around some of these very challenging areas. So, um, so I think that's the, the, the third element of the Labour staff. And the final element of the Labour staff is the extra support <coughs> that we're putting in the budget next year for communities and residents in New Ferry. Um, New, New Ferry, I think, uh, I think quite shamefully, has been ignored by this government. That terrible uh, 
um, tragedy in 2017. Um, I think still people still have the uh, scars of that tragedy. Uh, I can remember being, <coughs> being there the day after the gas explosion and the, the, the sense of, of um, helplessness by those residents and those businesses which literally had all their livelihoods removed overnight was, was, was absolutely, it was, it was awful. And we stepped in the breach straight after that explosion by putting £300,000 of our reserves into helping that community. Our budget next year is saying we need to go further than that, so we're proposing a sum of £200,000 in addition to that to, to help that community. And we're asking the officers to come back to an early cabinet meeting uh, with a proposed methodology for how, for how that money will be dispersed. But we're sending a very loud and clear message in this budget that the government may have forgotten that community, but we haven't as the Labour control the administration. And I'm proud that we're putting that, that money in and you know against a very difficult financial um, sort of context. So in closing, I will put on record my thanks to residents who took part in the consultation. And they had a really um, helpful and comprehensive consultation around the, the budget priority. So thank you to those 1,300 or so Kev, people who, who took part in that consultation. I want to thank, as I said earlier, the elected members on the scrutiny committees who um, contributed to the uh, debate around the budget options. I want to thank all of my cabinet colleagues. I know you've worked tirelessly, literally, all year round to reach the positions where we reached there. I want to thank, thank you all, and I want to thank you know, Eric, you and your team, the senior leadership team, who did an enormous amount of work to ensure that I think we have a very strong financial platform going into the, the, the next financial year. And finally, a massive thanks to all of our staff who do a fantastic job day in, day out, of delivering good quality public services to the residents of Woodall. I think it's important that we record our appreciation. Sometimes we don't say that often enough, but I want to say that very loudly and clearly tonight, uh, to this morning as a leader. So, anyway, I think at that point I will end my comments and invite um, cabinet members to say So, thank you. Who's going to go first? Paul, and then George, and then Bernie. Paul. Thanks, Phil. Um, thank you very much for the so hard on um, creating a balanced budget in spite of uh, total facility and force. Extra care housing and assisted technology, investments in children's services and schools, highways and street lighting, 3G pitches, leisure centre upgrades and refurbishments. New ferry, the additional 200,000 in addition to the 300,000 already spent. Council tax reduction scheme, assisting those who are financially struggling day-to-day -day living expenses. This has happened with income generation, despite all of us. There's no loss of service, there's no compulsory redundancy. We have investment in our residents, their services and their environment, making Google a place to live, work, visit and invest. This has been achieved by a Labour run administration. And this is proof of what Labour can achieve in power locally and nationally, and I'm happy to support this. Thanks, Paul. George? Thank you, Phil. Um, I just, uh, again, very much uh, endorse this budget. It's been a well thought out uh, budget um, to meet our aspirations of the 2020 plan, as well as, as, as everything else that's coming on. Um, the last second part of the council, who got the job of bringing the resource in, there's others who are trying to save the resources that we've got. But in year, nine years of austerity, to find ourselves in this position today, I think it's truly outstanding compared to what the rest of this country has been going through. So I, I, I do say that uh, with, with a, um, an open heart. And basically say this, one of the big increases that we, we, we can do is by building more houses, quality houses, people of little deserve. Um, new homes bonus is a big attraction for us, although the government have reduced that by one year now, that's been five to four years. Um, <coughs> I've set the final organisation and the uh, licensing of the four areas has been very successful, 
so successful that we have maintained the people who are delivering that service on a scale where uh, it's cost plus no money. Uh, we've removed the, the fees, everything that have been paid as poor talents who will deliver the service, which is absolutely respected by people in the uh, and it's, it, it's all good news. Um, I, I, I think Phil, you're right by mentioning people, business and, and environment. I think those three are crucial and still are today uh, are, are part. Um, and, and, and I would like to endorse you, your sentiments uh, of all the people that you mentioned to make sure that this year um, this budget is um, having already delivered 200 million uh, of, uh, of, of, of savings to, to deliver another 45 million this year. It's absolutely wonderful considering we have not lost one service or any part of them services going through. So, how are you doing that? Okay, thanks, Bernie. I'm just going to endorse what's already been said. Um, I think we've done some excellent work here. And I think it was one of the officers who said at the um, meeting that last, last week that we have to be brave for some of the things that we've done. And I think we're all taking some very, very brave decisions. And it's them brave decisions and thinking out of the box, thinking completely differently to other councils that have got us to the position that we found ourselves in today. Um, like Jeanette's work with the um, Community Art Building program takes Preston's model to a completely new level. We can be, we've looked at it, we've thought about it before, but we can do that, but we can add to it as well. And I think that's what's made this much better. And we're working well for the people of the world. We're all here to represent the people of the world and to make sure that the people of the world get the best services they possibly can. It's not been easy. This government hasn't made it easy for us. But as we move forward, I think we demonstrated. Phil made a decision about four years ago not to shut any libraries because the thing behind that was once the library's closed, it's closed. If we keep them open, when money starts coming back, we can start building on them. And that's been the way of thinking. Don't close anything. Let's protect everything that we can and build on it as we go forward. And that's what we've done. I think. It's testament to, to Bill's leadership, I think, that we find ourselves in the position that we're in now. I think it's, it's a fabulous budget, £45 million pounds without any cuts. I think it's testament to the leadership here on Will, but it's also testament to the hard work of the officers. And I am more than happy to, to commend this as, as a, a very, very proud Labour member and as a very, very good Labour budget. Thanks, Bernie, for those kind of words. Uh, Jeanette? Thanks. Thank you, Phil. Um, I suppose what strikes me here is that being in charge of a council means making decisions when we set our budget. And those decisions here today that we've set out for people to see are completely in line with our priorities as Labour Party members and the socialists. Um, it's quite clear the economy is not working for a lot of people on the world. Neoliberal politics are not working for our local economy. And we have hundreds of thousands of people here on the world who are not doing well by the Tory government. Um, there's nothing but disdain from the Tory government for local councils um, and the public sector in general. It's notable that no one from the Liberal Conservatives are here. That's how important they take this budget setting process, which is odd because they're quite happy to print off reams of leaflets with ridiculous and misleading claims on about our financial position. I'm really, really proud is not quite the right words when we talk about such a massive amount of money being taken from us. But I'm really pleased that we have thought differently. We're progressive, we're ethical, we're innovative. We had a few options available to us with such a massive budget gap. We could either cut, 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 as a lot of councils are doing, or we could be progressive and we could start thinking about new ways of doing something. And that's what we've done here today. But I'm really, really pleased to support this. And again, just put on my record also, Phil, thanks again to Finance, who have been beyond valuable. And also, Phil, to you for your leadership. This is your last budget yes. cabinet. Yes. I'm sure you're not going to miss saying the same thing every year that we've had to cut by X amount of million. But maybe I, I one day you'll come back yeah. as, 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 in the audience and you'll hear us say that we haven't had to make any changes at all. Thank you very much for your leadership.
Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thanks, Angie. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pay tribute really to, to us as a, you know, a Labour-led council. Mm -hmm. We are very forward-looking, you know, we are very ambitious for our, for our borough, we make no apology, um, you know, about that. Um, our uh, ethical growth and, and investment strategy, um, I think, you know, in terms of looking at how we invest, in different things so that we can earn income. And, and, and the two that, that I'm really proud of is the World Growth Company and also all the Screw Company. So in terms of the you know the, the growth company, um, of course the, the income that it provides for us is really important. But it's also providing uh, jobs and apprenticeships going forward as well. You know we've said that a minimum is sixty percent of our, our labour and materials and to be sourced locally. So we want to keep that wealth within the, within the borough. Um, the other wealth that we were bringing into the borough via um, our visitor economy, you know, we did so well last year <coughs> with the giants, bringing the, the giants in as well, um, you know, the, the tall ships as well. And this year, of course, we are Liverpool City Region Borough of Culture. And we've got a whole uh, program of really um, exciting events. We've got the um, tour of Britain as well, um, you know, in, in May and, and September. Um, that, that is going to be broadcast around the world. So these things are, are truly um, transformational for our, for our businesses, our residents and, and our communities. So I have a lot to be endorsed. Um, and can, I, can I just follow my, my thanks to you, Angie? You've led the portfolio around jobs and growth, and I think the kind of growth companies, yeah. the, the work you've done is, is much appreciated. And you were quite right to mention the um, Borough of Culture yeah. uh, year, which we did mention in the resolution. Mm -hmm. um, someone else used this phrase, but it sort of stuck with me that culture can provide the kind of rocket fuel for regeneration yeah. and growth. Absolutely. And when you saw the the, the, the really fantastic uh, year we had last year with the Imagine Borough Programme, yeah. um, our Borough Culture Year this year, I think will surpass that yeah. uh, with some of the events that you talked about. So all of that adds to the um, investment that will come into the borough because it puts us in the in the spotlight. And, and yeah, as you say, the tour of Britain. I think it's uh, forecast, it's broadcast to about 190 countries worldwide. Yeah. I think that is a fantastic showcase for, will be yeah. for, for the borough. So yeah. uh, the, the mm -hmm. borough of culture here is a, is a wonderful example of how we generate that, yeah. uh, A, attention, but, but actually investment, because mm -hmm. people will come to visit the borough, they will, you know, um, spend money in our hotels and restaurants and, you know, shops, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and as we know from other big events we've, uh, we've staged, once you can, getting them here, getting the, the kind of people to come here <coughs> appreciate what a wonderful place we're all is, yeah. is half the battle. Once you've done that, they, they will come back and they will invest yeah. from a business point of view. Yeah. So I think all those comments are really well made. Well right, anybody else want to say anything? Anita. Oh, sorry, Stuart. Should I go next? Sir? Okay, Anita and Stuart. So I do apologise. Yeah, despite austerity, I think we've done a fantastic job with this budget um, and have totally supported the budget. Um, we've seen improvements to infrastructure and buildings, um, reducing our carbon footprint. Um, in the year of environment, we're hoping to see a lot more uh, initiatives going forward. We've seen improvements to our leisure services, our fitness equipment, play areas, uh, additional uh, state of the art football provision. Improvements um, to um, sorry, a bit. assistance with aids and adaptations that allow people to stay in their homes much longer. Um, these are all areas which impact the general public, areas where we can support the most vulnerable. I'd like to thank the officers for their lead and the leadership team and Phil for his leadership in this. We've got great house opportunities through the growth company. Have a basic right to have a roof over their head. We've got 150,000 social housing units <coughs> that have been lost through this government. And we have 1,901 households on the missing list. And I think, as a cabinet, as a, a, an organisation, we are doing a great job in trying to find a solution for those people. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, thank you, Anita, uh, for that. Um, but thank you for all the work that you've done on the environment portfolios which you've uh, taken. With. So, Stuart, over to you. Thanks, Phil. much more quickly that people 